Hello, my name is Marisa Loach and I'm a PhD student at the Open University in the UK, uh, where I do a lot of analysis of single cell data sets using Galaxy. Today I'm going to walk you through the first in the case study series of tutorials, which you can find on the uh, single cell page of the Galaxy Training Network. So this is a series of tutorials that will take you through all the different stages of preparing and analysing a single cell RNA sequencing data set uh, using a variety of tools. And the data set that we use during these tutorials is one of fetal growth restriction in mice. The first tutorial in the series is this one, generating a single cell matrix using Alavin. So I'll just click on the name and we'll go through to the tutorial page. In this tutorial, we're going to be making our way from the very first raw uh, RNA sequences that you would get from your single cell experiment through to uh, something called an AnData object, which is a file type that you can analyze using the SCANPY pipeline. The first thing we'll need to do is to get hold of our data. So if we scroll down through the uh, tutorial, we'll see there's a couple of different options for this. Uh, we could import the data using these links, or we can click here on the example input history. And this can be uh, sometimes a slightly quicker option. So I will click there. And that's going to take me through to uh, Galaxy History. This is a publicly available Galaxy History that just has all of the data sets that we'll need already loaded into it. Uh, so I can, let me just close down this tool search panel by clicking on that spanner. That gives us a bit more room here to see what we're doing. Uh, up at the top, I can click the gray button, import this history. And uh, I could change the name here if I wanted to, but I'm just going to click copy history. And this will bring that example history uh, into my own Galaxy account. So now when I press the home button, this is my Galaxy account and I now have a copy of that input history. So I'll uh, just stretch that out a bit bigger. So let's take a look at these files. The top one here, experimental design, if I just click on the name, it'll open up a little preview here. That has some information about the samples in this data set. So each sample is uh, one of the mice in the experiment. Uh, the next one down is a faster file. Uh, so I can click on the eye here to open it up in the main page. Uh, so this is a lot of different RNA sequences and they all add up to make up uh, a reference genome of a mouse. So these are all of the possible RNA sequences that we that uh, exist in a mouse. Uh, then the, the next uh, data set is a GTF file. Uh, so I can click on the I again. So this is a file that uh, contains annotations or information about all of the genes and the RNAs that we can find in, in a mouse. So this tells us a, a few different things about, about what we might find in our data set. And then the last two data sets, if I click on that I again, these are actually our experimental data. Uh, so these are the RNA sequences that we found in our experiment. So uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking for our experimental RNA sequences in that mouse reference genome or reference transcriptome. And we're going to be using the GTF file, the annotations from that to understand which genes our RNAs came from. Uh, and we're actually working with just one of the uh, mice or one of the samples from this, uh, the original data sets. So this is N701, that's one of the mice. And we're, we're not even working with the whole sample from that mouse, we're actually working with the down samples data set. So that's just a portion of the data set. And this is because uh, some of the tools that we're using in this tutorial can take quite a long time to run. So by kind of reducing the size of this data set, we've made it a bit more manageable. So you can kind of learn the process without having to wait, hopefully too uh, long for things to happen. So I am doing my analysis in the single cell omics lab and I'm doing it on the Galaxy EU server. Uh, you can uh, find these tools outside of the single cell uh, omics lab and you can also use them on other Galaxy servers. If you are looking for some of the tools using this uh, tool search uh, panel, sometimes they can be hard to find if you're not in the actual single cell page. If you are having trouble locating one of the tools that you need, then one thing you can do is to click on this hat up at the top and that will open up tutorial mode, which is just an overlay with the Galaxy Training Network in it. So in here we can scroll down and we can find single cell tutorials. 
And then in that list, we can find that case study section and click again on uh, the tutorial we're running. And that just opens up the tutorial above your page. So you can actually uh, work through the tutorial here. You can read all of the content, look at the questions. And once you get to one of the hands-on steps, this is the first uh, step that we need to do. You can actually click on the tool name in this overlay in order to open it up uh, in your main panel. So now I can close down this uh, tool search panel just by clicking on that spanner again. So I've got plenty of space here. So this uh, first tool that we're going to use is called GTF to Gene List. And what we're going to do now is we're going to take this uh, uh, GTF file. So that's the file that has the annotations of the mouse genome in it. And we're going to uh, pull out uh, the information that we want from it. Because remember when we looked at it, it had quite a lot of information in there. So we are doing RNA sequencing, so we don't want to look for gene uh, features. We want to look for transcripts. Uh, so it's just an RNA which has been copied or transcribed uh, from a gene. So because we have transcripts, we're going to put transcript ID as the first uh, field or column in the uh, output that we get from this tool. Uh, we're going to click this box to uh, suppress the header line, and that's because we're going to be putting uh, the output from this into Alvin, and Alvin doesn't like to have a header in the table. Uh, so then what do we want from our GTF file? We want it to tell us the transcript ID. So this is the ID of the RNA that we have found, uh, but we also want it to tell us for those transcript IDs, the gene ID. So which gene uh, was that uh, RNA or transcript copied from? Uh, and this is because uh, we want to end up looking at genes rather than uh, RNAs, because sometimes you can have, for example, multiple RNAs that come from the same gene. So we tend to kind of, in biology, we like to think about uh, things at the gene level uh, quite often, not always. <laughs> uh, but today that's what we're going to be doing. And we will uh, click this button too. Yes, we would like it to append a version to the transcript identifiers. So this is, uh, if it has uh, two transcript IDs that are the same, it'll just add something onto the end of them so that it can differentiate between them. And that can happen again, like say, if you have uh, two transcripts that come from the same gene. Um, okay, so we're gonna say, no, don't flag the mitochondrial features, uh, not at the moment anyway. Uh, we'll come back and use this uh, function again a bit later on. But we are gonna click this button. Uh, yes, we do want to provide a cDNA file. So the cDNA file that we want to provide uh, is already there for me. This is the FASTA file. Um, so this is the file that has all of the sequences uh, from the, the entire mouse reference genome. And we're going to actually filter this file uh, to only cont uh, contain uh, RNA sequences that we have annotations for. So RNA sequences that actually have a transcript ID. So yes, we want to, to match uh, the sequences in the FASTA with the transcript ID. And I'm gonna click this button. Yes, we would like you to actually filter the uh, cDNA file so that we just have a file with uh, sequences that we have annotations for. So now I can click Run Tool, and that should start processing. Uh, it might take a little while. Um, yeah, I have noticed my Galaxy is running a little bit slowly today. Maybe it's a bit busy. So I will probably just pause this recording and uh, come back to you once that has uh, finished running, as it hasn't quite started yet. So it might be a little while. Oh, there we go, it has actually just started. But I'm still gonna pause you anyway, just in case this uh, takes a while. Okay, so my tool has uh, finished running. Hopefully that didn't take too long for you. Let's uh, take a look at these outputs. So here we have the annotation table. I'll click that I. These are the annotations that we asked the tool to uh, bring out from the GTF file. So the first column are our transcript IDs and the second column are the gene IDs. As you can see here, like there's uh, two rows here that are identical uh, for the genes, but they have different uh, transcript IDs there. So those are two transcripts or RNAs that came from the same gene. And we're actually going to be, uh, when we uh, use the Alvin tool, but it's actually going to be counting uh, the genes that we're, that, uh, rather than the transcripts. It's going to be kind of amalgamating the transcripts together into the genes if they came from the same one. Um, so let's uh, click the pencil and we'll rename this 
file as map. Uh, click the save button. And then we'll look at the other output that we got from this tool, the annotation match sequences. I think actually if we click the eye, that's not going to work very well. It's just going to yeah, show us this. Uh, but if we click on the name of that output in the history, we'll get a little preview of it there. You can see there's some sequences in there. This is our filtered FASTA file. So this contains the uh, sequences from the mouse uh, reference transcript home that we have annotations for. So if we click the pencil, uh, we'll rename this as filtered faster and then click save. And while we're doing some renaming, let's just pop back to these uh, two uh, uh, experimental data sets we had at the beginning. I think uh, the tutorial recommended that we change their names and that's because they're, they're quite uh, tricky to uh, uh, differentiate between. But you can see that this one here, if I click the pencil, uh, it has a 1.fk towards the end there, and the other one has a 2.fk. So we're going to rename these something a bit easier to find. Uh, so this is from sample N701. Ooh. N701. And I'll put a hyphen, and then I'm going to put this as read1, because this is the one that had a number 1 in it. Let's save that. And then for the other one, I'll click that pencil icon again. And I will name this one N701 read2. And you know, renaming your files isn't uh, essential, but it definitely makes it easier to find them when you're inputting them into tools later on, as we're about to find out. Because uh, now what we can do, now that we have uh, drawn out the information we needed from the GTF file and the uh, reference transcript home, we can actually use the Alvin tool to uh, look for these uh, experimental sequences in that filtered FASTA file and to tell us, uh, using that map, which genes each of our sequences came from. And Alvin is also going to count up how many copies of uh, RNAs from each gene we found in each of our cells. So let's click on the spanner in this uh, activity bar, and then we'll search in here for Alvin. Here it is, click on that. And then we'll just click on the spanner again to close that down. Okay, so we are going to use a reference transcript term from our history. Uh, I think there is also a built-in one here, uh, that that is a mouse one, so theoretically we could use that, but we've just, gone to the effort of creating our own uh, filtered FASTA and maps, so we're going to use those. So our transcripts FASTA file, that is our filtered FASTA. And then we will scroll down and just check that everything is okay. So paired end data, yes, that's what we have. And here you can see renaming those files was very useful because in this mate pair one, we can choose the one that we named read one. And then we've already got read two in that second one. And that's what we want. So everything else looks fine. Uh, this is the correct experimental protocol for this data set. And if we go down further, the transcript to gene map file, that's uh, not what we want. We want our map in there. And then before we run this tool, we actually want to make sure we're going to get the uh, correct outputs that we want because it can produce lots of different files. We don't want to make all of these because uh, that will fill up our history with uh, lots of things we don't want to uh, really see. Uh, but we do want to click here for the salmon uh, quant, quant log file. And we also want to ask it for uh, the features used by the CB classification. And then we also want to click on this gray bar here, the advanced options. And if we scroll down here, we can see uh, dump cell V transcripts count matrix in MTX format. So we're going to click that button to say yes, because we are going to use that file later on. So once you've done that, you can click Run Tool. And Alvin, as you can see, does is going to produce quite a lot of outputs. And it could have produced more if we'd asked it to. Uh, but these are going to be, include the ones that we want. Uh, and basically, Alvin is going to be using uh, that map and that filtered FASTA file to tell us uh, how many uh, of each RNA or each uh, RNAs from each gene we had in each of our uh, cells. But it is going to take a while for it to do that. This is the uh, step that takes the longest in this tutorial. And uh, this is the main reason why we're using that downsampled uh, file rather than the whole data set. 
So mine hasn't actually even started running yet, but I'm going to pause the video and this is uh, my chance to go and make a cup of tea. So I recommend uh, taking some time to <laughs> have a little break now and uh, coming back once Alvin has finished running. And I will just pause the recording and do the same. Okay, so Alvin has finished counting up my RNAs. Uh, let's take a look at some of these outputs. This one at the top here, the salmon log file, if we click the little I, uh, you can see here there's some information about uh, what oliven has been doing. Uh, you can see the mapping rate there is so about 25%. That's not particularly good, um, but the tutorial does explain a little bit about why that is quite low. If we scroll on down, we can see uh, here we have uh, the CB IDs. If I click on that I, these are the barcodes or the identifiers for all of the cells in our data set. Then the next uh, output, if I click on the I of this one, the gene IDs, uh, these are all of those uh, gene IDs. So those are the ones from that second column of the annotations. But these are all of the, the uh, genes that we actually found RNAs from in our data set. And if we look a bit further down, this is the uh, MTX file. So I'll just uh, click the I there. So this is... Um, the uh, file that we asked Alvin to dump out for us in the advanced options. This is a matrix uh, market file. And this basically includes all of the counts that Alvin has uh, created for us. This is uh, where it has information about how many of each gene it found in each of our cells. So uh, while it was uh, making all of these files and uh, uh, doing all of this counting. Alvin was also actually doing something else for us. It was doing some quality checks and filtering. And uh, we can now create some plots that will tell us a little bit about uh, what Alvin uh, thought about the quality of our data and which of our um, droplets or cells it decided to get rid of. So let's click on the uh, spanner here in the activity panel and we will search now for a tool called Droplet barcode, droplet barcode rank plot. So I click on that and I'll just close that down. So uh, we are now going to plot um, the number of UMIs or the number of unique genes that were found in each of our droplets. And uh, we're going to first do it uh, with the raw data before Alvin did its uh, filtering. And then we're going to plot it afterwards at showing uh, what happened after Alvin did its filtering. So this first time, let's uh, turn this button to no. Uh, we don't want to use an MTX file. The input we want to use, we will choose here, is going to be the raw CB classification frequency. So this is before the Alvin uh, filtering happened. Now let's give our plot a name. There's a barcode rank plot, and it is for the raw barcode frequencies. So let's uh, run that. And this uh, plot is going to help us to identify some of the um, problems uh, with our data because obviously experiments, things can go wrong. Uh, we're going to do some more quality checks and more filtering uh, in some of the later case study tutorials. Uh, what we're going to look for now are uh, some of the problems that can happen in single cell experiments when you're separating out individual cells into droplets. So what the goal of the experiment was, was to put uh, one cell in each droplet. Uh, but sometimes uh, you can end up with more than one cell in a droplet. Uh, those are the sorts of checks we're going to be doing in the following uh, case study tutorials. For the moment, we're going to try and look for um, empty droplets. So these are droplets where uh, we didn't manage to capture any cells, or maybe we captured a bit of RNA, or perhaps like a fragment of a cell. So Alvin has tried to identify uh, any of these empty droplets in our data set. And uh, these plots are going to show us uh, kind of how well it did that. So these first plots will show us uh, the data, including any of those empty droplets, because it's showing us uh, the raw data before filtering. And after we've seen these plots, we will uh, make the same plot again, but for the data set after the filtering was done by Alvin. Okay, so that's finished. Uh, let's click on the eye of this output, the barcode rank plot, and we'll see our plot here. 
Uh, so this is showing uh, on the vertical axis here, the number of UMIs or the number of unique uh, RNA molecules that we found in each of our cells. And you can see that the cells have been ranked uh, along the horizontal axis according to how many of these UMIs they had. So here at the uh, left-hand side, we've got uh, the cells that had lots and lots of UMIs in them. And as we move uh, across to the right, uh, we have the cells that had fewer UMIs in them. And the tutorial kind of explains a bit more about why this isn't a particularly uh, dramatic uh, barcode rank plot uh, because of our uh, downsampled data. But you can see that there are some cells here that just didn't have that many uh, unique RNAs in them. So these are the cells that uh, we might, or the droplets rather, that we suspect might not have actually had a whole cell in them. Uh, but Alvin has uh, decided how to, it wants to filter out these uh, poor quality droplets. And uh, we can actually take a look at uh, the same plot for the filtered data. So let's open up the same tool again, the droplet barcode rank plot. And oh, let me just close that down. Uh, so this time we are going to use an MTX uh, format matrix. So we put yes there. And this time uh, we're going to use that MTX files. Remember, this is the one that we asked Alvin to dump out for us. And uh, we want to also click this button here. Uh, yes, we would like it to uh, assume that the cells are in the rows because that is the, the way that our matrix is formatted. If we didn't do that, it would get very confused. And then uh, let's give this plot a title too. It now remembers this previous title, but now I have a, I'm making a barcode rank plot, but it is going to be not for the raw barcodes, but for the Alvin processed uh, data. So I'll click to run the tool. And this plot should uh, show us the uh, effect that Alvin's filtering has had. And once we see that, uh, we'll actually, we're actually going to try a different way of getting rid of uh, empty droplets. And this is because uh, Alvin, you know, it might have done a very good job of uh, identifying and counting our RNAs, but it hasn't necessarily done the best job for this data set of identifying these empty droplets that we want to get rid of. Uh, so there's another tool that we can use, uh, which can be slightly better at doing that. So uh, once uh, you know we've seen what Alvin does, we can try this other approach because it's kind of it's always useful to to know the different ways of doing these things. Right, so uh, my plot is ready now. So now for this uh, second uh, plot, I will click on the I for the uh, barcode rank plot. And this is the same plot again, but for the filtered data. And you can see there's this kind of sharp uh, uh, line down here. And this is basically the cutoff where Alvin has gotten rid of any of the cells that were uh, further to the right. So uh, it might not be that obvious here because uh, the... Uh, size of this horizontal axis has changed. So it's actually a lot uh, you know, shorter than it was before. It only goes up to a thousand. So there were a lot of cells that were further to the right in the original plot, and those are now gone from our data set. And you know, in some cases, you might be fine with the way Alvin has uh, gotten rid of the empty droplets. Uh, but in this case, uh, we don't think it is an amazing job. So we actually are going to try using a different tool. Uh, but because we want to do that, we do actually need to rerun Alvin uh, in order to do it without letting it do its own filtering. So if we scroll down to find sort of any of these uh, previous Alvin uh, outputs, we can just click on the name of one of them and we can find that little curly arrow and click that. And that will help us to rerun the uh, tool with all of the same inputs that we had before, except that we're now going to do a couple of changes. So we have all of the same the same things. We don't want to change anything uh, of our inputs, uh, like our reads and everything. They're all in the right place. But we want to go down to this grey bar and click on the advanced options. And here we're going to scroll down until we see something that says the fraction of cellular barcodes to keep. Ah, here we are. And then here we're going to enter one. Uh, and basically that's just saying we want to keep all of the uh, barcodes. Don't filter anything out for us. We're also going to do, go down here to where the minimum frequency for a barcode to be considered. We're going to reduce that from 10 to three. That's just to make sure that we keep as many uh, cells as, as, as we can. But 
uh, not ones that are absolutely terrible. So now click Run Tool. And again, if I scroll up in my history, we're going to see all of these Alibin outputs, including that MTX file that we uh, like to get dumped out. And again, this is going to take a while. So I think on the previous one, it took about half an hour for uh, my Alibin tool to run here. So I'm going to assume it's probably going to be about the same again, uh, which means it's time for me to take another break and to pause the recording. So I will be back uh, when this tool has finished running. Okay, so uh, that actually ran a lot faster for me this time. So I hope you had uh, equally good luck. Uh, now we've got uh, our Alibin outputs, this time they're all uh, unfiltered. And we're going to enter these into our next tool. So let's click on that spanner, get the search out. And we're going to search this time for something called Salmon Callisto MTX to 10X. And basically we're going to take that MTX file that got dumped out by Alvin, and we're going to transform it into something called a 10X file. And this is just because this is the sort of input that we want to have uh, for the next tools. And the main difference is going to be that uh, if you remember previously, when we were making that plot, we had to uh, tell the tool that the uh, cells were in the rows. Uh, we're now going to flip the matrix around so that the cells will be in the columns. So uh, we the only thing we need to be careful about here really is to make sure that the uh, that we have the right Alvin inputs and that we're using the second set of uh, Alvin uh, outputs that we made. We don't want to use those filtered ones, we want to use the unfiltered Alvin outputs. So those will be the ones with the larger numbers in each of these. Uh, so we have our MTX file, we don't want that one that's number eight, we want this one, number 21, which is from the uh, unfiltered one of Alvin. Uh, for our genes file, we want to use uh, the gene IDs, uh, but from, from our second run of Alvin stuff this file here. And then for our barcodes, we want to use the uh, CBIDs, which have our barcodes in them. And again, make sure it's from this second run of Alvin. So now we can click to run that tool. And this will uh, give us our 10x outputs, uh, which we'll be able to uh, put into another tool later on. So I'm just gonna let those uh, run and I'm going to start on the next step of the tutorial while I'm waiting, because uh, that's going to use a different file. Uh, what we're going to do now is we are actually going to go back to the GTF file, uh, which if you remember all the way at the beginning, that's the file that has uh, the annotations about the different genes and transcripts in the mouse genome. And we are going to pull out a bit more information uh, from those uh, so that we can add it into our, with our uh, data to kind of uh, make our uh, final data set a bit more informative and a bit more interesting, really. So uh, let's go back to, if we scroll down in our history, we can use the uh, rerunning button again if we find the right uh, tool. Where are we? Ah, so if we click on like either the map or the filtered faster, uh, if you remember, these are the outputs that we made. If I click the rerun, uh, from this G2F to gene list tool. So you could you could open up a new version of the tool and input everything into it again. It's going to be a little bit faster for us if we if we rerun this because it has a lot of what we need entered already in it. Uh, so it has our GTF file as the input. This time we want information about the genes because Alvin has just counted everything uh, uh, using uh, genes as it's kind of the the. Um, entries in its table. So it's kind of uh, combined uh, transcripts from the same genes. So now we want as the uh, first field in our output table, we're going to have gene ID. Uh, we're still going to suppress the header line. And now uh, our list of the outputs that we want to pull out from that GTF file. We want the gene ID uh, because that's uh, what Alvin has used. And we're also going to pull out the gene name. Uh, so the gene ID is the ensemble ID, which is that kind of uh, the long uh, kind of string of letters and numbers that we had a glimpse at before. The gene name is kind of uh, slightly uh, easier to remember and easier to, to speak uh, way of identifying our genes. Uh, so it's kind of useful to include that in there because it's going to look a bit nicer on our plots when we continue through these case study tutorials and start actually making some, some pretty pictures. And we're also going to include one more uh, uh, 
column uh, mito. And this is going to tell us uh, whether the gene is a mitochondrial gene or not. So this is whether it's a gene that was uh, that is in the mitochondrial genome, because they have their own tiny little bits of DNA with a few genes in them. Uh, so again, we want to, to keep uh, that on yes to append the uh, version if necessary. Ah, and here is what we're going to change. So remember, before we didn't use uh, this, the flag, the mitochondrial features. This time we're going to turn that to yes. Uh, we don't actually need to change anything in here. Basically, what this is going to do is it's going to look through that big GTF file and it's going to uh, find out which of the genes are mitochondrial genes using uh, this information. And it's just going to give us a list, that column called mito is just going to be uh, it's going to say false in there if it's not a mitochondrial gene and true if it is a mitochondrial gene. That's later on going to let us uh, work out some useful uh, quality control me measures. Uh, so if you continue through the case study tutorials, you're going to use this information. And this time we are going to say no, we don't actually need to filter the FASTA file again because we're not going to be using that again. So let's run this tool. And let's uh, check up at the top of the history whether that other tool has finished yet. Uh, there we go, it has turned green. So we now have uh, these three files here and uh, we can actually rename those to help us kind of identify them later. So the first one is our genes. Let's click on the I. And you can see here we've got our column, well, in fact, two columns that are, I think, identical. And these are the gene IDs that uh, Alvin has uh, counted for us. So let's click the pencil icon there. And you know, you can see again, if I just go back to this, you can see why we want to include the gene names because when we see them in a minute, you're gonna see that they're a little bit uh, more memorable. So let's click the pencil icon there. Let's rename this file as gene table so that we'll be able to find it easily later on. Uh, the next one up is the barcodes, click on that I. You can see here are those cell barcodes. These are the identifiers for all of our cells. So I'll click the pencil icon there and I will rename this as the barcode table. And again, this is mainly just to help me keep track of uh, where my, oh, I've left an S in there. It's, uh, not needed, so save that again, barcode table. And here we have the matrix. Let's see if we can see that with the I. Yeah, so this is again, that's that matrix market format. And this is uh, the file that includes the counts for each of those genes in our gene table. Uh, how many of each one of them did we find in each of the cells that are listed in our barcode table? So let's uh, click the pencil on this one and rename this as our matrix table. And I will save that. So our GTF uh, to gene list is still working on the producing this annotation table for us. So hopefully that's not going to take too long. Okay, so here we have this annotation table. So these are the annotations that we've just asked the tool to uh, pull out from the GTF file. So if we click on the I, we can see what that looks like. And here you can see there's our uh, ensemble IDs, and these are the gene names in the second column. So they're not particularly inspiring here, but you can see that some of them might be a little bit easier to kind of think about and to, to look at on our plots. And then this uh, third column here, this is our mito column. So all of these ones are false because they're not mitochondrial genes. Somewhere down here, there will be some genes uh, with true here, which will be our mitochondrial genes. So what we want to do now is take this information. So these are the annotations for all of the genes in the GTF file. And we want to just uh, pull out, uh, we want to match these together with the genes in our gene table. So these are the genes that we actually found in our data set. So uh, we want to uh, filter, we want to, uh, for each of the genes in our gene table, so this is our table uh, from our data set, we want to match that up with the relevant gene name and whether it's a mitochondrial gene uh, using this file. Um, we want to get rid of any uh, annotations uh, for genes that we didn't find in our data set. And we also want to make sure that we're keeping uh, our gene table in exactly the same order, because then it's going to match up uh, with where it should do in our matrix. So there's a couple of steps we're going to need to do to do that. Uh, so let's click on the tools. And the first tool we're going to use is going to be join two data sets. There it is. 
so we need to very carefully uh, make sure that the first data set here is going to be our gene table. And that's because that's going to ensure that we keep our uh, gene table in exactly the same uh, order. And we're going to use column one. Column one is the gene IDs. And we're going to join this data set with our GTF. Um, Oh, let me just check this. Oh, this is a TSV file. Yeah, so if, if you uh, have the wrong file type here, it's not going to show up in, in the possible inputs. So I'm going to need to change that, which you might also need to do. So for this annotation table from the last step, click on that little pencil. And this is uh, the same way that we changed the names before, except that this time we're going to click here on data types. And here where it says uh, the current type TSV, I'm going to get rid of that and I'm going to put in tabula. There we go, click there. So this isn't actually going to change the file, it's just going to change the, uh, the way the format is named on Galaxy. So that's going to enable the other tool, uh, the next tool to actually recognize this as the, as the sort of file that it can use. So I'll click save there. And you can see that's just changing the type there, it's become tabula. So now when I go back here to join two data sets, uh, and I'm the first one, I want my gene table and using column one, the gene IDs, and the second one now, I should have this, my annotation table. So I click on that. And again, I want to use column one because that also has the gene IDs in that one. So the tool is going to be able to match the gene IDs from the gene table uh, to the gene IDs in this annotation table. I don't want to lose any of the genes uh, in my gene table, so I'm going to say uh, yes, keep any that don't join up. So if you just uh, don't happen to have them in that second table and keep any lines that are incomplete, uh, but leave the others on no. Uh, so now I can run this tool. And this is just going to combine those two tables together. So this is a uh, this is still orange, but uh, once that's kind of that, there we go, it's finished. So now this should start running in a minute. And this is just going to combine together my gene table with the list of genes in my uh, data set with these extra annotations that I've uh, produced from the GTF file. So once that is done, uh, we'll take a little look at it and uh, see what we've ended up with. Okay, so let's click on the I. And I'll just close down that uh, tool search again. So here we can see these are the two uh, data sets that we've joined together, the two tables. So the first two columns here are for the first data set we put in. And these are basically the two uh, identical gene ID columns that we ended up with in our gene table. And the next three columns are the columns we got from our annotation tables. So these are, again, the gene IDs, which is what we matched with the uh, gene table. And then we have the gene names and the mitre column. So we don't actually need all of these columns because these three are identical. So now let's just get rid of uh, the extra gene ID columns. So click on that spanner and we're going to now use a tool called cut uh, columns from table. So click on that and we want to uh, keep column one, which is gene IDs, column four, which is the gene names and column five, which is that mito column. So now I can run this and we should end up then with a table that actually contains the information uh, that we want to uh, include in our final and data object. So it's going to have the gene IDs um, in exactly the same order as in, as in that uh, gene table uh, so that it will match our matrix table, uh, but also with these extra annotations, the gene name and the uh, mito column. And once we have that, uh, we could make our and data object. Uh, but bef before we do that, we actually want to do our own filtering because this time we haven't let Alvin filter out those empty droplets. So we're actually going to use um, our own uh, other tool to, to do this. And uh, in order to do that, we're actually going to need to take these files that we just produced, so our matrix, our barcodes, and this uh, annotation table once it has finished running. And we're going to first uh, uh, read these telex files into a particular type of, of uh, object called an, uh, a, sing a single cell experiment object. And the, the way we're going to do that is using a tool called droplet. You, ooh. I've got some extra letters in here. 
get rid of those first. Uh, droplet utils. Uh, oh, hold on. Let me just first uh, show you this as uh, the search is not doing what it should. So let's click on this. So this is our uh, um, file where we have uh, gotten rid of those extra columns. Now we have column of gene IDs, column of gene names, and our MITRE column. So let's uh, just click on the pencil to rename this file to something a bit more uh, recognizable. So let's call that the annotated gene table and save that. And that will ensure that uh, now when hopefully the, I can find this tool, uh, we will be able to uh, recognize those files that we need. So let's try again. Droplet, ah, here we go. Droplet utils. And the one we want is uh, read 10x into single cell experiment object. So I'll click on that. Let me close down the tool search. Okay, so now we want to make sure that we're choosing the right files and because we have a bothered to do that renaming, it shouldn't be too hard. So our matrix is the matrix table. Our gene table is the annotated gene table and our barcodes table is the barcode table. So now we can click run tool and this will basically take those three files and it will turn it into a single file of this uh, SCE object. And that's uh, the reason we're doing this is because this is the type of file uh, that the next tool, which is going to be uh, identifying and getting rid of empty droplets is going to need as its input. I think uh, a lot of uh, what you do in single cell analysis seems to be converting between one format and another, uh, because we have a lot of different tools that all have their own uh, preferences for what sorts of files they're using. Okay, so this one file here now contains our matrix and our barcodes list and our gene uh, IDs and gene annotations. And we're now going to open up the tools again and we're going to search, uh, this is for droplet utils again, uh, but this time we're searching for something called droplet utils empty drops because this is the tool that we're going to use to get rid of uh, empty droplets uh, from this data set. So I'll just close the tool panel. So uh, our, um, our data object, so this is, uh, yeah, it is already in here. Uh, sometimes I think this file can be a, a, um, a bit uh, tricky to, to get into here. Um, but yeah, it, for me, it is currently in there. Uh, so I all I need to do here is to scroll down until I see this button, uh, which says, should uh, barcodes estimated to have no cells be removed from the output object? I want to say, yes, please, please get rid of uh, anything that you don't think has a whole cell in it. And that's uh, all I need to do here, uh, other than click run tool. So this is going to produce a couple of outputs. So one is, again, the single cell experiment object, but this time with those empty droplets uh, removed from it, and then it's just a tabular output with a bit of uh, information for, for us. And once that has actually completed, the uh, final step for this tutorial will be to actually uh, convert, uh, again, a file type conversion. Uh, we'll be converting this single cell experiment object into that and data object that I kind of promised you at the beginning would be the final output from this tutorial. So let's do that one uh, final uh, file conversion. I open up the tools and this time we're looking for something called SC uh, Easy Converter. There it is, I'll click there. I'll close that tool uh, search down again. So the conversion that we want to do is from single cell experiment to and data. So oh, it looks like we have no data sets uh, of the right type here. And actually, I think this is the step that I was thinking about that you sometimes have uh, trouble getting the data set into. Uh, so one thing that sometimes works is if you uh, drag and drop this uh, single cell experiment object, so this is the one that we've just emptied out of empty droplets, if you drag that over and drop it in here, sometimes that works. Doesn't look like it's uh, working for me today. Uh, another option is if we go back to that uh, emptied out object and we click on that pencil icon, 
and we can just uh, go to the data types tab again and we can uh, rename the, the uh, format uh, to the correct one. So this is, uh, uh, Galaxy currently thinks this is an R data object. It's actually an R data .sce object. So we can uh, select that one and save it as this. So again, this isn't actually changing the file. It's just changing the uh, name of the file format. So uh, if I click on the uh, name here in the history, just to open up that sneak peek, you can see that the format is actually now changing to rdata.sce. So this means that if I go back to that tool search and I search again for SC Easy Converter, this time I should be able to find that file. Uh, it's not there at the moment because I haven't uh, changed this drop down menu yet. So remember we're changing from single cell experiment to and data. So if I click on there, aha, so now my uh, uh, rdata.se file, which has just gone green, is in here. Uh, so all I need to do now is to click run tool. And this should end up producing an and data object that contains, again, in a single file, all of that uh, gene information, my barcodes, and the matrix, which is telling me how many uh, RNAs from each gene I found in each of the cells. Uh, so this is the type of data uh, format that we actually want to use in the following um, case study tutorials. Uh, but remember, this is uh, this is the, the data for only one of the mice in, in the original experiment. Uh, so while that's running, let's just go back into tutorial mode by clicking that little hat. Let's go all the way down to the bottom of this tutorial to the conclusion. And we can see kind of uh, what our next step. So that's the uh, um, workflow that we've just been running. We've just done all of these steps in this tutorial. If we look just above that, we can uh, see uh, what you will see at the end of this tutorial. So you can... Um, think about what you want to do next. So we ran one of the samples, so one of the mice, uh, you could go and run all of the other FASTQ files uh, through all of the same steps that we just did. You could do it manually like we've just done, but there's also a workflow here that you can click on. So that's just um, a, a, seri a, a series of these tools that are set up. So you can actually just click, run all of these tools that we've just run by clicking once on, on, your, uh, on the other FASTQ files. Uh, or you can actually just click here uh, on this link and that will take you to a galaxy history where all of the uh, case study data sets have already been run through this Alavin um, uh, processing workflow. Um, so either if you do this yourself or if you use the uh, data sets that are already been produced, uh, you can move on to the next tutorial in the case study series that is combining data sets after pre-processing. And that will just tell you how to take all of the and data objects that you produce, the one we've just done now, plus the ones from the other files, uh, the other mouse samples into one single and data file. So that will have all of the data that you need for the following um, analysis. Uh, that uh, tutorial also includes a section on mitochondrial flagging. So remember, we've produced that mito column that tells us whether a gene is mitochondrial or not. There is a key step in this tutorial that tells you how to um, actually make use of that column to calculate the percentage of mitochondrial RNAs that you found in each cell. So even if you uh, don't bother with the with combining the different data sets, it's worth clicking here on mitochondrial calculations to find out how we actually make use of that column, because uh, that will help you to kind of understand where the uh, quality uh, control metrics that you're using in the next tutorial after that one uh, actually come from. So let's just click outside of this uh, overlay and see if our and data object oh, it is still running. So hopefully that won't take too long to produce because uh, that's going to be the end of the tutorial. But we do want to actually see that grow, 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 go green uh, before we uh, finish this video. OK, so that is now finished. Uh, we have our and data object. Uh, which means this is the end of the tutorial. We've come uh, all the way from those raw RNA sequences through to this and data format uh, that we can actually analyze with the ScanPy pipe.